Uh, Neo Makobe, Neo, you sent us these, the few identities here. I'm not going to do all of them. What I'm going to do is I might be doing two to three maximum, but the, the method is exactly the same for all of these. The approach is the same. So we might do one or two and then talk about the approach for the others because I want to get to the next trigonometric section. So let's look at the first one. The first one says 4x. Now that already immediately is interesting. The cosine of 4x we must show is identical to 1 minus 8 sine squared x plus 8 sine to the power of 4x. Now we know what? We know that the cos of 2a, we have three choices there. Let me write them down here quickly. The cos cosine of the double angle 2a is cosine squared a, uh, theta, let's make it a theta, minus sine squared theta, or we have 2 cosine squared theta minus 1, or we can choose 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Now I'm going to talk us through most of the stuff that's in this table is using these one of these three at some stage in the problem. Okay, now we've got to know which one to choose from the onset so that we do not waste time. Okay, let's go for it. The cosine of 4x. Here, everything is written in terms of x. So it's going to be a bit harder to reverse back to something that looks like this. Secondly, everything has a sign. So I'm going to say, okay, let me start with my left-hand side here, uh, Neo. I get the cosine of 4x, and for now, I'm going to choose the second one here. Because this is going to become twice the cosine squared of half of that angle. Remember, here's double whatever is on the right-hand side over there. So if this is 20, this will be 40. Okay, we've got 4x, so this is half of it, which is 2x minus 1. So we applied the middle one first, okay? Now we can go, and we can go straight for sine. The answer doesn't have cosines in it, Neo. I hope you can see that. Okay, so I'm going to bring in my signs at this place, at this point in time. So I've got twice something minus 1. And that something, I'm now going to go for the third choice I have here to bring in the sign. So 1 minus 2 sine squared x. And remember, what is this? This is squared. So what did I do? I just used cos of 2x and I replaced it with that. I used the identity again, but this time with the sign. Okay, so let's multiply out and see where this gets us. We get twice. If I square this, I get 4 sine to the power of 4x minus 4, that times this times 2, sine squared x. Then I get plus 2 minus this one that's at the end. Now, folks, this is all still, let me just see. This is all still in a bracket. That's a plus 1, then, if it's still in the bracket. Okay, so let me just put my bracket back there and leave it as a plus 1 so that we can see why it becomes a positive 1. Okay, so this becomes 2 times 4 is 8 sine to the 4x, this is now simple algebra, minus 8 sine squared x plus 2 minus 1 is plus 1, and you have your right-hand side. So, Neo, in this question, you had to make a crucial decision. You had the cos of the double angle. You can choose one of three of them. Okay, so choose the right one. If I had chosen the sine squared of 2x in the second step in this problem, I was lost because then I had 4 sine squared cos squared. And I didn't want that. I didn't want things multiplied with one another. I wanted them 
added, a minus there and a plus there. Now let's, so that's, that's taking care of F. Now if you look over here folks, look at the second one, the G. Cos squared minus sine squared is obviously talking about the cosine of 2A. Now let's, let's look at that one, let's look at the second one. We want to show that the tan of theta over the tan of 2 theta is equal to this right hand side. And I'm going to, this was F, I'm going to start with the right hand side. Let me change color here. So I'm going to look at G. I'm going to start with the right hand side for the simple reason that I know what tan 2 theta is going to become. Tan 2 theta is sine 2 theta over cos 2 theta. So let's see how far we can go with the right hand side to get us over here. Okay, so the right hand side of that identity is cos squared theta minus the sine squared of theta over 1 plus the cosine of 2 theta. And again, you are faced with the same choice. Now always, Neo, this is a big tip. Always look at the other side that you're not using and see what it is and then decide what you're going to do with the side that you're working on. Okay, let's have a look. Cos squared minus sine squared. I know that there's a tan 2 theta. So underneath the line here, I want to have sine 2 theta over cos 2 theta. That's where I'm going to go to get to the tan of 2 theta. And at the top, I want a tan theta. So that tan theta can be sine theta over cos theta. But let's start with the obvious. Here we have the cosine of 2 theta. Okay, that's the top double angle that we have. In the denominator, we want a 2 theta there because we do not want to get rid of the 2 theta. It's in the answer. The answer is the tan of 2 theta. That's what it says. Okay, so let's see. 1 plus cos 2 theta. Now, if I take the cosine of 2 theta and I bring in uh, 2 cos squared. Let's, let's go for the middle one. We bring in 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. Now I know you're asking me, but why did you do that? Why did you bring in the cos squared of theta to twice the cosine squared of theta minus 1? And the answer to that is simple. It gets rid of this one here because I still have to plus that one to the, in the question. Okay, so look at it again. It is 1 plus cos 2 theta. It's cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. I brought in my cos of 2 theta on this side. And now I must start playing with whatever is left on the right hand side of this identity. Okay, so let's see. Does that take me anywhere else? Well, I can get this to the cosine of 2 theta uh, divided by twice cos squared theta. And I'm a little bit stuck there for now. I'm left there with twice cos squared theta. I would have hoped to have something else. Okay, so don't worry. You're not going to scratch this out in an exam and say, oh my goodness, I made a terrible mistake here. No, you go to the left-hand side. Now, I'm deliberately doing it this way, folks, so that to show you and to illustrate to you that you are always on the right path if you apply the correct identity. So tan 2 theta or tan theta over 2 theta. What can I do with this? Well, there's a cosine of squared of theta. So I want a cos of theta and I want a cos of 2 theta. Okay, so let's see how I can get there. This I can change into the tan. Let's leave it for now as the tan of theta. The denominator is the sine of 2 theta over the cosine of 2 theta. Okay, so that is what the tan of 2 theta is. I'm using a normal grade 11 identity, which is a quotient identity. Okay, let's continue. I'm just making space here for us. If I now go 
and I continue with the tan over the, uh, the, the sine over the cos, I'm going to multiply the top with cos 2 theta and the bottom. In that way, I get rid of my, what we call a complex fraction. Okay, so there cancels, that goes with the tan. I get the tan of theta multiplied by the cosine of 2 theta divided by the sine of 2 theta. Now I'm over here. Now I must decide what is it that I want to do going forward from here. Let's go and let's see what I had on the other side. On the other side, I had a cos squared theta at the bottom, a cos of 2 theta at the top. So, so far that is in place. All of this I must now play with to create 2 cosine squared theta. So I'm not going to touch the cos of 2 theta. Okay, so let's change tan into sin over cos and see what happens. Now remember, I started with my right hand side, deliberately over here. I couldn't go further. I didn't know what to do after that. So I didn't go and scratch it out. I went to the left hand side and I'm now going to try and get the left hand side to look like the right hand side there in the middle. So this becomes the sine of theta multiplied by cosine of 2 theta divided by, and remember this is sine over cos, but I'm going to write the cos in the denominator. If I went too fast there, this is sine theta over cos theta times the cos of 2 theta over the sine of 2 theta. So all I did here, folks, in my mind, I multiplied with cos theta over cos theta to get rid of the complex fraction, and that's where I am now. Now, I'm going to change the sine of 2 theta because the only 2 theta that's there is the cos. So this becomes twice the sine of theta, the cosine of theta, Neo. Okay, and look at how beautifully this thing cleans itself up. The sine of theta says goodbye to the sine of theta, and I have what I have over here. I've got the cos of 2 theta at the top and the denominator twice the cosine squared of theta, which we can finally claim is identical to the right-hand side of my identity. Okay, so again I was faced with a choice. I could have started with the left-hand side, I could have started with the right-hand side. If we look at that identity, the initial identity had a double angle on both sides of this identity. So you really have to choose carefully so that you don't push yourself into a corner here. The third one we have again, remember what I did here? I had 1 plus cos 2 theta, so I'm not going to do the third one with you. 1 plus cos 2 theta, remember what did we do with that? We had 1 plus cos 2 theta, so we introduced the double angle for cosine so that the minus 1 in the double angle rule cancels with a positive 1. Okay, and then we just continue from there. Um, where was this now? It's this one here. Cos 2 theta plus 1. Okay, so at the end of the day, you want an answer of cos over sine. Let's go and look at number i. Number i, we've got a double angle there. We need to choose carefully. Here we only have one choice for the double angle. There's a sine x, there's a cos x. So I'm going to start with the left-hand side here now, and I'm going to take those double angles and I'm going to get rid of them. I'm going to use my identities to get rid of them. There's nothing more that you can do to the sine of 2x than write it as twice the sine of x the cos of x. Let's look at the last one. The last one might be worthwhile doing. The cos of 3 theta. Okay, so let me do it in a blue. The cosine of 3 theta, where they say, prove to us it's equal to 4 cos cubed minus 3 cos theta. 4 cos cubed theta minus 3 times the cos of theta. We must show that these two things are indeed identical to one another. Now, Nao, 
Remember what we did in the first one. The first one, the left hand side had cos 4 theta on it. The right hand side had sines in it. So we chose first cos and then we went for all the sines. Now here, I've got to make a very clever choice. It's not the cos of 4 theta, so it's not a double angle. It is an angle that I need to split up into possibly a, co a compound angle. So I can start with a cos of 2 theta plus theta, for instance. Okay, so let's start with the left-hand side. This will be the cosine of 2 theta, um, cosine theta, minus the sine of 2 theta, sine theta. So in this one, it's your compound angle formula because you can't do anything with the 3 theta. So you've got to write it as some sum of some sorts. Now let's see what happens here. Now we get, here we've got to make our clever choice over there. The cos of 2 theta is 2 cos squared theta minus 1 times cos theta. Now remember, I'm going to try and turn everything into cosine here because Neo, my answer has cosines in it. So one more step and then you'll see it. If I break this up, I get 2 sine theta that multiplies with that sine theta to create sine squared multiplied by cos theta. Okay, so let's take this in. Here, I get twice the cosine cubed of theta minus the cosine of theta. Here I get uh, minus cos theta uh, times 2. Now let's change this to 1 minus cosine squared theta. And then hopefully we there. 2 cosine cubed theta minus cos theta. This gives me minus 2 cos theta because it's minus 2 cos theta times 1. A minus times a plus uh, sorry, a minus times a minus is a plus, 2 cos cubed theta, and all you have left is adding that term and this term over here. So Neo sometimes, if that's an even angle, it works with a double angle. If it's an odd angle like this, and they've asked this before of sine as well. Okay, so be prepared for these type of questions in your second paper, folks. They're not difficult. But don't go off in a labyrinth and do something silly. Look at what the answer is asking. In the last one, the answer had only cosines in it. Hence, I brought the cosine in there, and hence I brought it in here. Here, I couldn't do anything. I had to expand it first, and then use the square to my advantage.